right, right. What it does, from my experience, right, yeah, when you're a young man, like all people in life, you're looking for kind of like validation, identity, right, and, um, and being part of something, mm. right, which is why subcultures fucking evolve, like football hooliganism, you know, people... People like to be part of something where they're accepted by other people who share the same interests, mm -hmm. right? Gangs, for instance. Mm. Tribal, That's a negative. Tribal it is a tribalistic thing, mm. right? Yeah, but but that that need for acceptance and social validation and an identity is is what is the it's the core of what fucking graffiti is, really. I know mm. it's all ego based, right? Yeah, but. At the heart of it, it's it's all those things, those yeah. elements that humans strive for, you know, yeah. and it, it feel, fulfills all that acceptance in within a peer group. Exactly. Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official .com. <laughs> You need the Television app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Look at progress. Once she starts, it's like a bohemoth, isn't it? It just, bohemoth. It just rolls on and on and on, bigger and better. Oh, you know I, I mean? love it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, wanna be, should be, could be. You, know, you don't need to be anywhere else. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the originals, all the legends, all the people that are following us. Hold tight to Train Station and everybody else. You've got the television app. It's for the street culture business, all right? If you need more out of your life in the world of athletics and the creative arts, then this is your platform. Free download, iPhone, Android. All that good stuff. Right, look. There's, uh, there's some tremors going on in the streets. CBM's finest. Without question, if you have not been... <laughs> on the ground in the UK and London for so many years and uh, you're, you're way off your radar and not discovering who this gentleman is. He goes by the name of Graffiti Writer Wise, CBM. Well, that's good to be here, Kels. How are you, Jen? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. All I, right. It's a lovely day out there. It it's is good. a lovely day out there. Yeah. And uh, writing weather? It is writing weather, oh, isn't it? Oh, for sure, mate, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is it yeah. ever not a writing weather day? <sighs> well, unless it's pissing down no, <laughs> yeah. and then, then that don't really stop me. But, um, yeah, I, I like I like the heat. I like the I like the sunshine, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we actually bumped into each other for the first time a few days ago, which I am I was completely taken by surprise on and I was so glad that we connected properly like the yeah. way we did in, in Trellick, whole tight Trellick crew. Indeed. It was a good day, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Got down there early. Just uh was uh fancy doing something a bit more kinda of arty, you know, a bit more kind of piecing, less bombing. Taking a rest from the bombing, doing a bit more kind of like nice fucking letters, tried to do a character, uh. not done many characters, but, you know, trying to push it a bit. And, um, yeah, yeah, it came off well. Just seeing you there was uh, was a, a, a bonus, you know, it's nice. Yeah, nice but to trust link, me, you know? one of the nicest guys, man, <laughs> one of the nicest guys you're likely to thank meet you, on the street, honestly. You. But, of course, the reputation of Graffling's a whole different way, doesn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mystique of a person, and, bro, like, on the streets, you have been up for a good, good few years. I mean, Thanks. obviously, there's decades of, of Graff within you, mm. but, but more prominently, you know, it's just, it's just that classic throw up that you you do and once you yeah. cock it it's everywhere well it's kind of <laughs> like i go against the grain a bit because like the one letter throw was kind of kind of died <laughs> in the 80s you know everyone was doing one letters back then and it's all two letters now and um yeah i just uh i just like to think that the one letter to uh that, that defines your uh your name and um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, but also you're really uh, you're really rich with the colours. Like you make that thing pop. It's, it looks like you took your time and just coating the thing off, so yeah. it just bangs. You'd be surprised. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm just one of them people. I just like things to look sharp. You know, I like the white key line around it. You know, it kind of pops it out a bit. If there's a shutter that's all battered mm. and it's all grey and covered in tags, old tags and that. Yeah, you put a nice white key line around it and it makes it stand out a bit so more. So for those you know. that don't graph his key line is the outside colour that yeah, you Yeah, 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 yeah. And what what 
what you're fundamentally talking about is re- creating that, letting that reach do all the talking, like make it bang, make yeah, it stamp yeah. wood. I mean, for me, the important thing is like good spots, getting like good roadside spots that people are going to see, main roads. Um, and um, and just making it as big and bright as possible, you know, just so that it's like easily fucking seen, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Comes with a lot of a uh, lifetime experience, though. That I mean, it's. Mm. I think the thing is with bombing is like there's a lot of variables that you've got to think of, especially where there's so much, you know, traffic and. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, this is the thing. It's like I like bombing on my own. You know, it's like it's one of them things where. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. You ain't got someone keeping dog for you. You're just out there on your jacks, you know, and it's almost like your awareness becomes fucking sharpened. Mm. It's like you have a quick butcher's, boom, right. I can see that, I can see that. No old Bill, boss, you start. Once you start, that's it. There's no stopping. You're just at it then. Mm. You might, once you've done your fill and your outline, you might have a look round again, boom, right, okay, calm down a bit, do the key line. Tag it, it's finished, off you go, next one, you know. Mm. But it's uh, the adrenaline is, uh, yeah, that's the fun of it, really, you know. It's a, it's a buzz, man. I mean, anyone that goes out bombing knows this, that, that it's, that's the kind of fucking essence of, of, of graph for most people, I think, is the, uh, is the, is the vandal side of it, because it's, uh, it's, it's a good crack, you know what I mean? Explain a bit more, what does that do to you? What does the, 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 the activity of, what the, the, in the moment, what's it do for you? Uh, well... It takes all your focus, you know what I mean? It's kind of like you're just in the moment. You know, people say, you hear on, like, all this shit on Instagram and things, people saying, oh, you've got to live in the moment. Don't worry about the past or the future. There's fuck all you can do about all that. Just live in the moment. Well, standing there doing that, that's the most in the moment you can be because, you know, you actually stood there just concentrating on what you're doing, trying to execute it well, you know, and, like, not paying attention to anything that's going on. I mean, I've turned around sometimes and there's, like, pig vans been going past. They've not even clocked me, you know. It's like, what the fuck are they looking at? You know what I mean? Really? So it's like, yeah, and you think, oh, that's that's lucky. But, I mean, the thing is, I've never really been one for going out with other people, A, because I don't want to rely on them and I don't want them relying on me. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like you're kind of putting yourself in someone else's... Kind of, you know, uh, responsibility. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, there are certain people I like going out with because I know I can trust them because they're experienced and you don't have to worry about nothing because you know they're on it. But yeah. I guess they're uh, on their own singular attention as well. Like where some yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm presuming, but they're, you know, if they're inebriated, that's one thing. Mm. If they need their hands held for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. or they're, they're not on the same wave as you, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you've, been, if you've been bombing with someone for a long time, you know, since you were kids or whatever, or when you were younger, then there's that level of trust that you know that you're you're going to be sweet, you know. But um, for me as a newcomer coming into the game, you know, it's like I, I, I move on my own hours, it's unsociable hours. I move about a lot, you know, I get around a lot and it's like, it's, it's, mm. it's, it, I have a di- very different times that like I go out. It's like I have a lot of people who ring me up going, oh, yeah, Buzz me when you're over and, you know, around our, our bits and, and we'll go out together and all that. And I, I keep meaning to, but when I do get out there, say I'll be over in Grove or whatever or some. else. It's a bit of a Dear else. John letter right about now. With yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's I like, can't... I mean I, it, it, it might be like fucking like two in the morning, five in the morning, it might be midnight, it might be 9pm. It's like any... It, what it is with my life... I have to take these windows of of opportunity when I can. Mm. So if that be like an hour's notice, boom, right, oh, I can go out now, you know, or whatever, or this, that, and the other, different variables that affect my Mm. lifestyle, you know, work and that, and family life, it's like, well, you know, I just go out when I can. Mm. And that's often spur of the moment, you know. But that's what's great about... Because obviously there's responsibilities and also there's responsibilities when there's other people involved in Mm. your activities and what you're doing. But but when there's that level of... um, unpredictability and you have to find those moments to go and do something and you actually end up doing it on your own oh, I think it's more impact as a writer yeah it? yeah I mean yeah it's just hit at any given point that's 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 part of the golden strategy of yeah. it isn't it yeah yeah and also because I've got pals all over the city that you know 
I might not be over that, that area at that time, you know, and arranging stuff. I'm a bit flaky when it comes to arranging stuff, I've got to admit. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, just getting here, I was, yeah. er I, was early, I was early today, which was Yeah, like, you were. Yeah, 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 which was good, but because um, it was important, you know. But um, yeah, my I'm guy. not saying that meeting people, other people ain't important. But, but not as important just, as a Killer Killer podcast. Yeah, That's sometimes saying, I, it's like, you know, for, for whatever reasons, family things, things that happen, and I just have to ring them and say, "Listen, bro, it ain't happening tonight. I can't mm. make it. Sorry." Mm. And uh, unfortunately, that's that's how it is, you know. You said uh, you know the the last maybe three or four years where you've become very much uh, your presence on the street, particularly in London, mm. uh, you know. But this goes back, doesn't it? We, we we go back so far as Manchester, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in Manchester, and uh, you used to write there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> It's like the same old cliche, you know, everyone's like entrance into the culture started with the book and the and the, and the film. The book. And that's like late 80s, hip hop. I mean, every kid at my school was a tagger back then. It was that it was that all encompassing mm. thing. If if you weren't tagging, you were either a football head who was just obsessed with playing football or you were just fucking wanking off to the Smiths in a fucking your mum's bedroom, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> I don't know, people would uh, Everyone at my school was like, was into hip hop and and writing. Really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, there wasn't late like the, 80s, it was it was it there was wasn't a, that Smiths explosion that you think there would be. In well, you stuff. know, some people, students, they were into that kind of thing. You know, moody fucking music and that. But I was always just into the yeah. what was happening, the latest thing. You know, and and um, when was it? I went to see uh, Public Enemy '88 at the Apollo in Manchester. Nice. And this was a year after they'd done the Beastie Boys tour, I think, when that mad gig at the uh, um, the um, Hammersmith. Yeah. And, you know, bonkers. that famous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were, we were like, right, we got to get on that. They're coming to Manchester. There was a company called Camouflage that did all the uh, promotions and, and they set that up again. So we went down there and it was chaos. It was like the Wild West, you know. But yeah. it switched me on. It was like, yeah, this is good, man. I want to be part of this. And um, But then within a year... Um, some bright sparks brought this little pill over to this country and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the whole thing just switched and it was like, you know, once you started getting on them little fellas, uh, <laughs> the whole kind of music thing, hip-hop was like boom and writing. They say, you know, the old kind of like cliche that, that, um, that, that ecstasy stopped um, football hooliganism to a certain extent. I mean, I'm sure it's true, but it also put, a, put an end to my graph career. Mm. You know, it was a number of things, but... But mainly, it was like I just got so much into going to clubs and and doing ease and fucking the music and all that that like yeah, just like it seemed a bit kind of pointless just doing graph, you know. But it it was at a time when there was an era where it was all new and fresh and brilliant, and then there was an era where it went a bit kind of like quiet a bit. And then DDS turns up and then it all went fucking boom again, you know what I mean? And then they relit the fucking torch, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, I kind of missed out on that. I really, that's one of my regrets is that I didn't carry on and see it through because I moved to London around about 80, latter part of 88, early 89. What do you think um, you would have gained if you'd carried on? What was, what is that um, regret? Where's that stem from? Well, well, because if I'd have had the same kind of mindset that I've got now, back then, I'd have probably, well... I'd like to think I'd have been up there with a lot of the big names, you know what I mean? Because I had that, you know, drive, but obviously the drugs and the fucking partying, that, <laughs> that put a bit of a stop to that. Good you know? times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's that age-old yeah. hindsight, but then... But I never lost, I never lost the love. I was constantly, always doing outlines, right. constantly fucking, you know, in the black books and that, and always... Keeping an eye on what was going on and that, mm. but I just weren't partaking. You know, I think you're not the only just... one. There was a lot of people that that went under. Yeah, the yeah, rave yeah. But you never, concert. it never leaves you. It's like it's a weird thing that like, and anyone that writes will know this is that like it's an addiction that that is even though you give it up, you're still a writer. But even if you're not writing, because it's it's always there simmering away under the fucking. What, what's there though? What what is that? The the, the 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 love for it, the interest, mm. the kind of the. Seeing what's going on, who's up, what's you know, what's the latest thing, who's the biggest fucking people that are getting up at the moment. It's literally word on the street. You want to know what's yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just something that you're constantly interested in. I mean, you see people on the train, and when you see them going like this, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know exactly right. what their <laughs> cue is. You know what I mean? Because you can, you know, it's like everyone's like, aren't they? Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. Side, you know. Um, I'm often so. confused about why people don't do that. Like, it's better than a fucking bush, isn't it? Well, yeah. do you know what? It's funny because since my my elder children, well, mm-hmm. stepchildren, they're aware of what I do, and since they they have moved to London, and um, they're at uni they are now more aware of graph. Right, stop. Breaks right right, right now. Yeah. Okay, do they know your tag and your, yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah, your throw-up? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they see it a lot? They do. Well, and what's the general... Uh, well, right, my eldest stepdaughter, she looks for them all the time. She's like, she doesn't say anything to any of her pals or anything, you know, because she knows that it's an unwritten rule that we don't talk about that, right? We don't talk <laughs> about that, so... But um, but yeah, she's what's, like what's she, played in she's, the fight she's, club. <laughs> she's a, a civilian who has kind of converted to like, you know how when you're out, you're constantly looking mm. everywhere you look. You're just looking for tags, mm-hmm. anything, you know. And you whip, you're spotting stuff. Most nine to five people walk down the street, blase. They don't yeah, have yeah. a clue what's going on. They don't see just anything. Ahead, yeah. But we have this kind of other other vision where you're just seeing. You're just looking yeah. all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it's like a level of self awareness as well, like. Yeah. The fact that your daughter has an awareness of the space, she's in, mm. yeah, okay, she's going out looking for it for fun, but yeah. the truth be told, like, if you're aware of your space and your environment, you're not mm. looking at the ground. It's, 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 I think that's a real asset to a, to a person, isn't it? Well, you know, it's nice that she takes an interest in something that I do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, she, uh, she, she, it, she likes it. She likes going around town and then she'll be out clubbing somewhere and she sees some of mine and mm. it'll be like, oh, yeah, I saw your thing the other really? day. You were down and watched this, really? you know, and all that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's cool, Isn't man. this an interesting conversation to have? Because when, when, when graffiti started, mm. and we're arguably in the late 60s, 70s, you know, a lot, yeah, of, yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the um, steam in it was that it was a youth culture. It was a thing yeah. that, that only the rebellious young would do, the, the disenfranchised, the people that were... But now it's really... I mean, we, we, we're dealing with a different generation of people that we're talking about this sort of thing. is funny thing you should say about that is that one thing I've noticed is that cornbread fella never looked fucking like a kid to me. <laughs> he, he, he just like looked like he was in his 60s <laughs> from day, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you see pictures of cornbread from back then... And he, look, he looked ancient cornbread. then, yeah, old type yeah, well, cornbread, yeah, yeah, no yeah. fucking big respect, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. but that guy yeah. looked like, he looked like an old dude, like, back in the 60s, you yeah, know? I respect people like that as well, <laughs> because of the He didn't look like no 14-year-old, 13-year-old <laughs> kid, you know what I mean? That's right, no, I've got, I've got time for that as well, because at least, you know, you're not, you're not going to be uh, <laughs> yeah. disappointed, ever. No, no. <laughs> Um, you said something quite profound before we went on mm. uh, podcast, and I do want to kind of shift a little bit forward into that gear. You said to me that the graffiti game was like a game of snakes and ladders. <laughs> and I was like, yo, that, I never heard that before. Explain that. In a way, well, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's kind of self-explanatory, but in, from my opinion, it's, there's like, once you get into it, every move that you make is your choice, right? And you're responsible for everything that you do. And everyone's got their own different kind of, like, motives for where they want to take what they're doing. Some Mm. people don't pay that any mind whatsoever. They just like going out and wrecking shit, you know? Mm. Other people are a bit more kind of self-aware. They think, oh, you know... Um, And so there's, like, there's certain ladders that you can climb, you know, you get to a certain level, you know, mainly through, you know, just getting up a lot. Mm. Obviously, and, um, and 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 I mean the reason I'm here is only because I've you know been putting it out there, mm. um, and there are stages you can get to like box ticking. It's like oh yeah, that's good, you know, just getting this recognition. It's nice, it's a nice feeling, but then also at the same time, the more kind of like exposure you get, and you know, it's like dare I say. It's not a negative thing, but there are certain kind of snakes in the game. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on that you can that can that can unhinge you and and kind of trip you up a bit as well. You Derail know, it's your like, progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to just roll with the punches and just take. You know, you can't control other people, but all you can control is how you uh, react to mm. you know things mm. that are happening around you. You seem to me to be the kind of character that does does. Uh, <laughs> common sense, clearly, but mm. also a, quite a realist, a practical thinker, and sure. and you're you're also very self-aware and aware of your surroundings. 
yep, yep. definitely get all of that. I can be a fucking idiot, though, most of the time. <laughs> really, really, yeah. <laughs> you ask any of my pals, and, really? <laughs> uh, they'll tell you a different story, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I do, uh, I do like to uh, kind of analyse stuff, think things through a lot, and uh, maybe a bit too much sometimes, but... You know, it's uh, it's kept me fucking out of jail so far. So, yeah. so you've never been bagged or anything like that? No, no, well, just daft things, not graph related. You know, yeah. just drugs, fucking fighting and that, and just antisocial really? bollocks. You know, but um, mm. nothing serious. No, touch wood. So, <laughs> well, I've got this far, you know, so, mm. and life's pretty good. So yeah, yeah. Interesting that you said also before we went on that you've taken a lot more of a stance. You, you, you've been. Taking your time in doing piecing now and getting mm. more into the yeah the the, well, the, the piecing <laughs> side. I just think you know sometimes you know what I think I might go and do a nice fucking clean fucking piece, little character, see what I can do, you know, if I'm happy with it because that's what I enjoyed doing when I was younger. But um, you know, go back to the bombing. Well. Actually, I'm full of shit. I like bombing all the time anyway, so mm. it's just going to carry on, you know, and it'll carry on until uh, it will just run its course, won't it, you know? Mm. The, the act of doing a piece in a full scale, having more time to do things, does that interrupt? Does that... Because, you know, you like the adrenaline of, like, being out there... Bombing. Yeah, do, but it's... Uh, do you remember we were, we spoke about this on Friday? We were on about the, um, the yin and the yang. Yeah. Like, the, uh, the, the, the bombing and all that side of it is like the yin and the yang is like the taking your time on the wall legal spot no one's gonna mind the yeah. uh, you can just you know relax again it's about focus mm. putting all your energy into what you're doing you know concentrating and just you forget about all the fuckeries that's going on around you like life family problems work whatever bollocks you're going through mm. actually spending a couple of hours two three maybe four hours doing a nice piece you know, chilling out, having a zoot, fucking beer, whatever, mm. and just taking your time. Therapy. Yeah, yeah, it's very therapeutic, very therapeutic, and um, it's uh, it's it's a nice it's a nice way to kind of like I don't know. Some people like going football. Some people play golf. I'm not a big fan yeah, of golf. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Fishing some, ain't really yeah, my thing. Uh, you know, some people take loads of drugs. You know, I've been there. I've you know, I was that person that, that self medicated for years and years, mm. but finding this now is, you know, it's a bit like fishing, I guess. People like fishing, don't they, to get yeah. a bit of fucking... Yeah. You know, a bit of peace. Yeah, inner peace. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny you say that, because yeah. sometimes I, I get whispers, how very dare they, <laughs> of uh, of people saying, yeah, but what's the point? You're going to be paying for paint. Mm. Not everybody, but, <laughs> you know, people pay for paint. So I'm led to believe. Um, and then they... Go and put it, execute it in a public space, mm -hmm. and they go. What's the point in that? But then I think myself, well, we, you'll go and get charged up on a Friday, Saturday. What's the fucking point it's, in that? Uh, for me, it's an experience, and it's about the experience. It's about mm. you know, all right. Like the other day, that piece I did. When was it? Last week. Yeah. Gone next day. No biggie. You know, that's what happens in legals. But yeah. it's the experience of spending that day just chilling and just doing your little thing and having a laugh with your pals. And, um, yeah, that's that's what I get out of it. People underestimate the strength in graph when it comes to oh, yeah, listen, what it's right. really done for people. Right, it? right. What it does, from my experience, right, yeah, when you're a young man, like all people in life, you're looking for kind of like validation, identity, right, and, um, and being part of something. Mm. Right, which is why subcultures fucking evolve, like football hooliganism. You know, people people like to be part of something where they're accepted by other people who share the same interests. Mm -hmm. Right, gangs, for instance, mm. tribal, That's a negative. Tribal it is a tribalistic thing, mm. right? Yeah, but but that that need for acceptance and social validation and an identity is is what is the it's the core of what fucking graffiti is. Really, I know mm. it's all ego based, right? Yeah, but. At the heart of it, it's it's all those things, those yeah. elements that humans strive for, you know, yeah. and it, it feel, fulfills all that acceptance in within a peer group. Exactly, you know, and once you once you get into this kind of, you know, the best people I've met are all graph writers. Yeah, throughout. I mean, I've got loads of really good pals in different areas of my life, but all the people I've met since doing graffiti, they've all been mustered. Mm -hmm. All right, bar a couple of fucking Rogans, but. You know, yeah, yeah, par for the course, isn't it? It's funny how, like, even some of the people, like, quote unquote, wrongins, mm. 
when you meet them in the context of graph, mm. it's fine. Everything's chill. Well, that's a funny thing you say as well, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I never like to judge anyone on who they are in the graffiti world, because if they're good at graph and I rate them, they might be complete cunts as a person, right? Yeah, but if they're like, if I rate their style and they're sick, mm. I've got bare love for them, right? Yeah, but regardless of what they're like as a human being, right? Because I'll never have to, I, if I, you know, I'm not mates with them. Don't mm -hmm. have to be mates with them. I can mm. respect them as a graph writer. Those acquaintances. But, you know, that, yeah. I'd never fucking hang with them or chill with them because I know their soul is fucking dog shit, you know? So it's, um, yeah, yeah. The rain falls on the good and the bad equally, doesn't it? Oh, you know? God, that's good. See? You know what we're doing on here? We're <laughs> dropping science, killer killer four guys. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of news and traffic that we encounter in the mm. graph world, isn't it? Like, I think the majority of people that are writers, mm. they only judge writers for their ability in writing. Well, of course. That... That is mad because well, in the real world there's morals like a lot of people. Uh, don't... I don't know. There's a few out there that that, that that allow their fucking. They catch their feelings about other things, you know. If you take things at face value of like, you know, we're talking about peace and getting up, mm. taking true risk in the art that you enjoy doing. We're all doing the same thing. Doing you know, the same everyone's, thing. Everyone's everyone's hitting the same road. They they've got the same issues. They've got the same like fences to jump, literally, mm -hmm. in some, some mm -hmm. people, you know. But we're all facing the same kind of thing to get out there and get up. It's all the same kind of mm. issues that you're trying to overcome, mm. you know. That's what we've all got in common. Mm. And what do you think those issues are primarily? Do I mean, not that... Well, every, not by getting the way, bagged. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting bagged. Yeah, OK. <laughs> apart, apart from the after effects of doing the thing... But the, the, the precursors, yeah. and I know we're not tarnishing everyone with the same brush, mm. everyone's different, we've all got different yeah, yeah. lives and shit, but what do you think it is at its core that um, uh, we, everybody holds on their, on their, uh, on, on their uh, well, arm about that? A, you're committing a crime, a crime that has no monetary fucking reward, yeah. right? So you ask any mates who are criminals and they go, oh, what are you doing that stupid shit for? You're not fucking, you're not getting anything out of it, you know? But we are getting something out of it because obviously we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't mm. getting anything out of it. Mm -mm. And that's the thing that we all have in common. Mm. We've all got our reasons, we've all got our motives, but at the end of the day, we're all getting something out of something that was created by a bunch of kids in fucking Philly and New York, you know, fucking mm. 40, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Getting something out of it, aren't Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a physical thing. It's an art, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I hate to say that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. art gives you something in your soul yeah. that all the fucking money and fucking bollocks in the world that people are obsessed with, like fucking commercial and, 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 and materialistic fucking consumerism, that, that's never going to give you. You ain't going to get any peace of mind by buying a fucking, you know, Balenciaga mm. fucking pair of trainers, mm. are you? What the fuck is that all about? There's this flip side to what you're saying there, because what, you, what you're alluding to is the idea of, like, satisfaction. Yeah. But then there are these moments... And I guess it, it includes getting bagged. It includes, mm. you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. But then there's this other bit which is like, yeah, I'm not happy with that. That's driving me bonkers. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're all our own worst critics, aren't we? You're on about peace in yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. The, well, for me, there's three stages, right? You do your fucking, you pin it up. Great, happy with that. Fill in. Mustard, all right? You start doing your fucking doodads and your little bits and pieces. All and the that. bits then inside start, the piece, Then yeah. you start thinking about, like, you get a bit more critical about what you're doing and then that's when you start thinking, oh, no, it's all going tits up. Maybe not all right writers mm. suffer from that, but I do. I do. Because mm. I'm like, oh, I've no, that looks <laughs> fucking shit, right, yeah. yeah? But you ask anyone else, they don't even see it. You're seeing stuff because you're being too critical of your own kind of, like, abilities, you know what I mean, yeah? yeah? And then the camera never lies. What you think is shit, you take a picture of it, you look at it when you get home and you're like... Oh, I'm happy with that. Mm. That looks a bollocks. That looks better now than it did yeah. when I was stood there because you've, mm. your brain has had time to kind of decompress and chill and not be there. Like a second pair of eyes, you know. They always yeah. say a second pair of eyes always sees things. Which the camera does do, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, you see, which, you know, it's too late to go back and fix it then. But at the time, some people don't give a fuck. They're just like, boom, they're happy. They'll do go get up, finish it. Doesn't mean anything, yeah. you know. But I'm one of them people that are, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. 
you know, and I like to try and get things right. And, you know, I beat myself up a bit if it don't go my way, but it's just like, all right, fair enough. It is Do you have is. the same uh, pressures? I mean, you can't when you're on on the street. Bar. Oh, no, it's different. a total different thing, you know. It's like on the street, just do as best you can in the time you've got, you know. It's like it's not like breaking into yards and painting trains. That ain't my thing, you mm. know what I mean? But fucking people that do that now, Jesus, hats off to them mm. motherfuckers because... You know, the time that you've got to do that these days. And and now you're seeing more and more full colour, proper, well executed. Yeah. Not just like, you know, quick fucking boom, 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 and it looks fucking awful, but it's up there. You've done a fucking panel, great. People now, they're, they're doing yeah. more good shit in less amounts of time than ever before. And it's... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's impressive. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? I, I can't knock that at all. These are the... They're proper fucking up there. You know? Honestly, bro, like... As a street, as a street bomber, mm. like your position, where you, your placement is really key. I think honestly, like, I mean, I, I won't go so far as to name you exact spots, but I've got them in my head now. Mm. I already know where mm. there's a couple. If I was to say, oh, well, there's one there, one there, one there, but it's because of your positioning. You you've a way. It, so there's the strength in colours. There's the key line for sure. There's the one letter thing, but the way you've maximised on the letter and the way you put the little kind of teeth in and shit. So there's mm. fucking fuego. But it's also the position. Well, you you pick your spots carefully, don't you? You know, and uh, it's it's getting more and more difficult these days. A, you know, there's loads of areas that have got a heavy buff fucking presence. Councils are paying more money. They've got teams that go around and just eradicate everything you know so there's those areas that you don't go but there's still spots that you like oh, i really want that you know and there's nothing worse than she you got your mine. eye on it you got your eye on it and then the next day you go and some other someone else has took it and you're like oh well done yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. but you can see that someone else has had the same thought process you know mm. you've been sharing that same kind of like hunting that same spot you know what i mean yeah so that's a shared kind of like experience you know yeah maybe the other shared experience is the fact that like a like a territorial kind of pissing, like you're next to an artist or next to a writer or next to a... You know that they're passing through that way. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or that I, have, I have maximum respect for all writers, you know, massive, well-known people, young kids coming up. If you're getting up and you're getting those spots, then, you know what I mean, hats off to you. It's fucking, it's great. I love seeing it. I think London is going through a bit of a... A quite a good, healthy kind of um, renaissance. Isn't renaissance, it? yeah, resurgence, renaissance, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I think there's a there's there's more writers now than there has been in a, in a, in a, in a long sure. time, you know. And um, and these kids who are who are coming up, you know, their styles aren't fantastic, some of them. But you can see that if they keep at it, they're going to progress, and it's they're just going to get better and better it's and really better. Quick, isn't it? it's really, really yeah. Fire I think the quick. ones that are going to stay at it and carry on and and see it through, I think in the next five. Four, five, six years, you're going to see some real big fucking new names come yeah. through and, and start really pushing the envelope, you know? Scorning the next generation to yeah, move yeah, forward. Yeah, 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 and that's what's great about it. How did you get put in CBM? Oh, Met, Met, a funny story. Big actually. up, Met. Yeah, big up, Met. Big, big up, up, George. Met, George Bees, all yeah. The CBM crew. Yeah, all of and them boys, Fabe, Ram. Yeah, 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 you know, they're all at it. Bees, yeah, everyone. Deco. They're fucking, I mean, the, God, the, the style, the style that our crew's got, I, I'm really proud of, you know what I mean? I love, I love Fast that, 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 that yeah. proper West London fucking letters, you know, tr I'm a traditionalist. I like the kind of like, it's, it's, it's come, for me, anyway, my, my favourite writer back in the day, letter-wise, was Bando. All that CTK stuff. Mm. And, like, when it when it came through Holland and Paris, that kind of um, cross-pollination, and London as well, the three of them, I think those were kind of, like, thick, really fucking aggressive, bold, kind of blocky yeah. letters. Uh, that, that, for me, sums up London style, yeah, you know I what I mean? That. And that's, that's a mixture of, like, the Dutch mm. and the French, you know, and, and London... It was. They all kind of started doing this similar kind of thing. That's interesting. You Very know. legible, not wild style, just fucking. So you're you retracing know. it to the European. Well, for me, that's that's what I see as a lineage. You know what I mean? People like fucking Delta, mm, Bando, Delta. Ski, Shoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know all them fucking net Europeans and um, and and also you know Mode Two and and the TCA and M lot. Mm. They have the letters and that and that. That cross pollination. Mm. It weren't New York. 
you know, it, it, had, it had a different there, feel, though, wasn't it? But it weren't. It was nothing like New York style. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It was like they were doing their own style, and mm. and and that's what. When I first came to London in the like late eighties, and I seen what was happening on the streets and the trains and that, it was all like that. And DDS, their style was all like that. You know what Crazy. I mean? Crazy. Yeah. Diamond cut style letter yeah, and bang, yeah, yeah, bang. Yeah, sick, you know, and, and I'm a, a bit of an, a, a traditionalist and I like to see that carrying on, you know what I mean? Ooh, and it's ooh. good to see that there are writers today that are continuing to, to do that kind of hard, ooh. hard basic kind of style. 100%. And again, just people... Delta mode two. I mean, Delta himself, man. Like, ahead well, of he time, he he man. moved with the three D stuff very very quickly, quickly. But his early stuff, you know, was very um, very much like the. You look at London pieces and and dubs and that. Mm. I mean, there's a there's a definite correlation. Correlation, right? you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, But yeah, but Delta obviously went on and then did his three D things, and that yeah. went to a whole new level, which was yeah, completely yeah. fucking out of this world for that yeah, time. Yeah, you know? yeah, And then Mode 2 with the cartoon realism, yeah, these things kind yeah, of moved yeah, in yeah, there yeah, in but... favour of that. Yeah, know. it's good, man. Yeah. So, so, I mean, CBM, just going back to that, I do feel, <laughs> just looking as I've got a bees, I've got a bees yeah, yeah, map up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know there's, of course there's others, there's PFB, of course, you know, WD, yeah. and other people, DDS, of course, mm, hold tight mm, to you, yeah. you know, KTC, I mean, then this goes on. But, there's something. There's something about CBM in West London, where I just feel like you know, so it's 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 a London stronghold. Yep. They, they they get about, but there is so much diversity within mm. within that crew. Yeah, it's, yeah. It seems almost very. Feels thought thought through. The thing it? that's good though is that everyone influences each other's style. You know, it's um, it's it's not formulaic. It's like when new people come in, you can see where their influence is coming from by other writers in the crew, do you know what I mean? Which mm. is like an old school kind of like attitude, you know? Mm -hmm. You'd bring people in and they'd learn from like the top boys in that crew mm -hmm. and they'd pass down outlines and then they'd start doing them on their own. Mm. And before you know it, they've got the style as well and everyone's carrying that torch, you know mm. what I mean? And I like that, that kind of lineage. You can see that a crew has got a style. Mm. Instead of having like fucking 10 different styles, it's good that, you know, some crews have loads of people that have all different styles, that's fine. That's yeah. whatever that is, that's, that's up to them. But... What I like about CBM is that they've got that proper West London kind of like they're, they're, they're holding that fucking torch for the uh, yeah. the old school, you know. 100%. Big up Pure as well. He's an Oh, yeah, guy. yeah. My man. Yeah. <laughs> Top boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Love proper. Pure, mate. I mean, is that, I... I I can't, there's, there's a lot of fault lines with, with CBM. Mm. And a lot of the crews, they intermix and interplay. Yeah. Um, you're very loyal to the CBM family. Oh, without you? a doubt. Matt put me in, gave me that, dare I say, a cosign, but as soon as he put me in, that was me, hit the ground running, bang, I'm fucking going all city with this motherfucker, mm. you know? Sometimes it only takes one incentive, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. to be in, in, a, in a class of crew. Mm. That's what sends you off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, we got some heavy hitters now. It's like there's there's a lot of style in our crew. There always have been. And I say, you know, I'm I'm privileged that I'm a kind of like I'm not one of the main crew members. I'm on the periphery, but I'm doing my thing, you know what I mean? And whenever we all meet up, we smash it, you know what I mean? It's good. Mm. It's like it's I wish I could see them more than I do, but I'm just representing as much just, as I can, you know what I mean? Periphery. Cuz yeah, I kind of feel that. Mm. There's a handful um of writers, don't you? Don't have been well, they all live over here, don't they? That's the thing. And yeah. I moved out of Grove fucking what 15, 20 years ago, so so originally a Grove, Grove man lived here many, many years, yeah, from 2002 to 2008. Oh, so was you a good while, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was, um, <laughs> life was a bit different back then, really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want to elaborate on the on the how life was different back then? Not really. I was just uh, <laughs> yeah. I was I was I was basically more involved in the kind of uh, uh, shall we say the the filthier side of life. You know what I mean? It was, really? uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was a bit of an addict. Um, and West London was was a perfect place if you want to get fucked up all the time, you know. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I can yeah. testify to that. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a cross we bear in yeah, these neck yeah, of the woods. Yeah, but that's, Different era, you know. Mm, uh, mm. But yeah, just driving up here today, like like I said, the sun shining, driving up Grove, fucking hell, it's like it's such a good 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 manner, you know, and it's like good people. Mm. It's the one place that I've lived all over London. I've lived everywhere, and and it's the one place where I actually settled for a bit, 
and, and there was a sense of community, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's people were cool, you yeah. know, everyone, you knew everyone, and mm. it's like, and it, good and bad, you know, mm. but everyone knew what you were about, and it was like, there was a mutual respect. It's, it's, a, it's a good place, West mm. London, hence the fucking term West is best, you know mm. what I mean? Well, it's, it's not so transient, isn't it? No, people, no, people but you've got ways. all types, rubbing shoulders, super fucking rich, mm. and proper fucking... Yeah. Downtrodden motherfuckers, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where does that sweet spot lie where it, it, people are comfortable enough to be in those I think two dynamics? it's a natural organic thing when you have different cultures and different, you know, class systems in the same close proximity. Mm. They have no other option but to get along. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Forcing and, uh, the... the that that uh, that integration, life yeah, 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 you know, and I, it's, it's amazing, it's brilliant, and it's yeah. one of the best places I've ever lived anywhere in the world, you know, yeah. and I love it. So I just miss it, you know, but mm. you know, circumstances change. Mm. Got to move somewhere else. Life happens and shit. Yeah, yeah. So Manchester, do you still have a connection with? I've got pals up there still, yeah. family up there, you yeah. know, don't really go up that much. Place is like an alien planet to me now. Really? It's so fucking different, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was growing up there, it was like, uh, it was still very much like a Victorian era. It was like, I'm not, I'm not kidding, it was fucking yeah. like old and fucked and yeah. everyone was skinned and it was horrible, right? But it was great, you know, yeah. like after the Blitz, like London was the same, I'm sure. But I hear people say about the East End when people used to mm. play on slag heaps and in bomb sites and, you know, everything was fucked up and ruined. Mm. Not as bad as New York back in the day, you know, yeah, when yeah, they, yeah. they were burning everything down. But, um, but Manchester was a pretty fucking grimy place. It was pretty hard. And the people were, were um, yeah, it was, it was a tough, tough city, man. And then, um, but yeah, culture, out of all the adversity, the best cultures come out of, out of totally. you know, struggling and, and misery. And that's nice. why poshos will never have any culture of their own. They have to, mm -hmm. you know, propagate it from other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, they big up the, man, the Manny writers. There's lots of Manchester yeah, writers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for for your money, who who was around at the time? Because oh, all I th uh, the, the, a name that always stuck out to me, and I'm talking about early nineties mm. now, was Kelzo. Yeah, well, he was the the main guy that that got on the map. Yeah, he had that three D style, yeah, yeah. A bit like Deltas, but you know he yeah, had yeah. his own little twist on it. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, he, he did a lot in uh, Hume at the Bull Ring back in the day. Didn't know him personally. I was from a different manner, but um, and I weren't writing then either. But I, I kept an eye on what was going on. Mm. But yeah, he um, yeah he was the main kind of. You talk about Manchester Graph, and he's the yeah, yeah. everyone knows Kelso. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like yeah. yeah. But there was a big bus scene down there. We <laughs> we had this little crew HR. We were called High Rollers um, after that fucking Ice Tea track. You know High Rollers. Do you remember that? Yeah, of course. Off the uh, Power Album. Power Album. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sick too, man. Yeah. So we were like, we just got ideas above our station. We were like, yeah, yeah, we're the fucking business, man. We Love high, it. High Rollers, man. You know, yeah. Silly, silly. But what, you other know, what other writers were around at the time? Um, there was a big crew called um, CIA Crime in Action. Mm -hmm. Um, some some big big writers there, but not that anyone's probably ever heard of them. But because Manchester wasn't really kind of on the map back then, you know mm. what I mean? It was like London was the place, yeah. you know. And um, <laughs> it's funny because I, I I have more kind of when people say, "Oh yeah, Subway Art" and all that. Yeah, it's like yeah, that that book was the one, but Spray Can Art. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That was the book, right? That I could first proper relate to because yeah. it was. You know, it had London stuff in, and you could go and see that shit for real. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was more relatable, and yeah, Manchester was like, it had a scene, but it weren't like on the world map. You know what I mean? It's mm. like Goldie was doing his thing and all that, and which made the presence in you know the, the Wolverhampton. Midlands. You know, I mean, Wolverhampton was smaller than Manchester, but mm. you know, he, he pushed it. Yeah. And it, things go like that, don't they, you know? Yeah, it's true. But Manchester never really had, like, big writers that were, like, really getting out there and, 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 yeah. and you know... Well, we didn't have any kind of transit system. It was all buses, really, so, you know... Trams. Lots of tagging. Trams. Trams yeah, you got well. trams now, but they weren't around well, back they, then. They weren't, they? No, nah, no, nah, that was a new thing. That came after the... Um, after the bombing, you know, the IRA yeah, blew up the Arndale yeah, and that. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They rebuilt a lot of shit after that, but saying that now... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fucking mad place now. It's like a different, different planet. It's different like, beast, You yeah. want to go out and party. I mean, it's always been a party city, but, 
But yeah, there's you know warehouse project, all these other fucking yeah, places mad. that are happening. Yeah, you know, I'm too old for all that shit now. But if I was young, then that's where I'd be gravitating yeah. towards. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. too right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny you say that because you know when it, like the the Nottingham scene, I think was it mm. Alert Alert as, as pops, a writer, yeah, yeah pops, yeah. yeah, and then Sheffield, which blew up mm. you know the, yeah that was a bit later though wasn't it yeah Mist and all them lot. i mean oh, no, actually no they, they were still Des and them it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And a bunch of others and mm. then there was the graffiti wars documentary which yeah. obviously yeah. like pe- yeah but manny that. never really kind of like established itself as a fucking a force like those places yeah. you know it was um it's weird i don't know why that never yeah, it's you know. funny isn't it yeah i would yeah. put i would put uh liverpool in the same Kind of category. Yes, of yes. course, there's Liverpool writers there, you know, yeah. and big them all, big up them all. But it, it's, it's more of its time. It, mm. I guess you're right. I mean, the, the the capital was where the tubes were. The capital yeah, was yeah, where the, yeah. um, the the scene was most rife. Let me tell you, right. When I first came to London, I left school. My mum said, right, fucking, fuck off now. Go and live with your old man, right. And, it, and he was living in Muswell Hill. So I moved down there with him. I was in digs with him. Got me on the tools, working as an electrician on all, like, building sites around town and that. Mm-hmm. And we used to have to drive from Muswell Hill into central London. And we'd go down all the way road. And I'm not joking. I, it's, I can see it as clear as day now. There's just this ah, 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 everywhere, right? That robo lowercase r, you know, the baby r. And I was just like, fuck me, this guy is, like, killing it, you know. Yeah. And I weren't getting on tubes then. I was, like, we'd drive everywhere, you know. We had a van. It was like we'd go to a site, chore a load of tools, fuck off to another one, do bits and pieces, and that was that was working, that. And um, it was good, but, yeah, North London was... And, and uh, a bit later, driving through um, f- City Road from, like, Angel, no, Highbury mm-hmm. to Old Street. Yeah. And it was just DX, 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 mm. DX, DX. And it was like driving through the fucking Bronx, mm. you know, all tight drags. Very different, fucking, yeah, big time. I mean, it was, it was such time. an eye-opener for me. Mm. It was like I'd never seen nothing like it on yeah. that level. You know, it was just like, fucking hell, these cockneys yeah. are proper killing it, man. Well, the thing was as well with East is that it's not what it was. Back then it was a whole different, more desolate place. Oh, it was a toilet, yeah, 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 yeah it was dead. Absolutely dead. Yeah, we lived on um, we lived on Brick Lane for a while. When was it? That's late, mid to late nineties, ninety seven. Fucking, hell, it was just nothing. Really, you know, you know, all the Bangladeshis were there. It was yeah. curry houses and that, but but there was nothing going on. It was just like a fucking you know, dead zone. Not know? a tourist. And for me track. back then, the younger me to think what it's like now, and it's like a graph hotspot, and it's like all the tourists and all that. Does it that blows, drive you? That blows me mad, mind, yeah. man. It's like, fuck, you know, yeah, it's great. It's, yeah. it's so culturally appropriated over there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you say that, but it's um, it's always been one of those areas that um, that has got a culture of its own, I guess, you know. the um, Yeah, and... I can't knock it now. It's very commercial, but you know what's it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Isn't Progress it? is good. I yeah. can't knock it. You know, it's like yeah. you get people going, "Oh, it ain't what it used to be." The locals don't like you. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, fuck off. You know, it's like London's constantly changing, yeah. and as long as it's not fucking hurting anyone, apart from pushing all the poor people out, then which gentrification ain't great. But yeah, it's uh, that's another story, isn't it? Don't get me yeah. started on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean about cultural sides to London. Like, mm. yes, it's always been there. Like, like you were saying, like, with, you know, Sabo, throw ups, oh, and, mate. and Drax. That's and, another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On. When he was, like, yeah, he that, was throwing that, that thing up. up. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We, everywhere we went, that was, that was, yeah. You'd everywhere. Go. And I lived in Ealing for a bit, and I tell you what, getting that central line out from Ealing. That's when I first started noticing uh, mean pieces mm. on that on that strip of the central line yeah. coming in. Fucking hell, guy was everywhere. That yeah. throw up, respect to mean, one of my favourite writers, okay. fucking Don, and his throw up, in my opinion, is yeah. probably the best that's been around. Yeah. I you sometimes know. go to these locations to do filming for different things. Mm. And I could be like on the phone talking to someone. You know how you're on the phone, you're kind of wandering yeah, around yeah. and you're talking, you're wandering aimlessly, just get involved yeah. in a conversation. And all of a sudden, I suddenly see like a mean tag. In the like least likely of places, you're like, fuck, oh, this guy, yeah. he was 
everywhere. Style. He had everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Top fucking hands, banging fucking style, and great throw up, you know? Yeah. And consistent and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, there's not a lot of writers that have got a bad thing to say about me. No, he's no, no, he's no. a top guy, you know That's what I mean? Right. Big time. Big time. And, um, yeah, big time. Yeah. And, all, and always up from what I gather, and even in more previous experiences I've witnessed and been a part of. Oh, he's been he, here, hasn't he? He likes to be a party. He loves, to oh, he loves yeah. a party. He <laughs> loves hanging out. He loves being around. He's a, a good man. Good after man. my own heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has that ever got yeah. you into travel, wise? You, the party, mo- party boy mode. Does it ever? That's and that's another podcast, mate. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I went into detail about about from the year ninety three when the partying kind of petered off. And then the serious gear started coming in. And then from 93 to about 2002, that's almost a decade that I, uh, I really have uh, very little recollection of. <laughs> decade but, of decadence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no, people tell me and there's, you know, photos and there's, you know, memories that are blurry and that, but I've got a vague recollection of what was going on. But, um, yeah, a lot of crack was smoked. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of just fucking... Whew. Disappeared. Yeah, well, I weren't, <laughs> I didn't disappear. I was just fucked, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just a pretty heavy time. And uh, lost a lot of friends, got involved in a lot of fucking fuckery and, uh, yeah, yeah, criminal enterprises that weren't really working and it just ended up fucking rotten, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, so kind of, like, what I'm, the way I'm living now... Been a bit of a saviour, you know. Everyone says, oh, yeah, Graf saved my life and all that. But yeah. literally, no, my wife saved my life, my kids saved my life. Yeah. But um, but Graf is, is helping me continue that kind of consistent, kind of steady lifestyle, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm. A life but, of Yeah, we, we'll lives. talk about that again sometime, you know. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. That, that whole era of, like, yeah, badness was, like, that was pretty crazy, and I've got a lot of stories to tell about that. But, uh, I can yeah. only imagine. <laughs> See, and I think this is the thing about this particular podcast is you never really the you never really get to go deep on the surface of what people are piecing. Yeah. Uh, there's a theory and a philosophy mm. and, and a life behind that piece that people are, are painting, aren't they? It's a serious business. You ask any writer mm. who, who says, oh, I don't give a fuck, they're lying, right? They give a fuck about everything that they do, every single fucking tag, every single throw up, every single piece, whatever, they give a massive fuck about. If they didn't, they wouldn't be doing it, yeah? Mm. You know, it's like, it's important. It's a big thing for for everyone, which is why everyone gets so fucking angry about, you know, bitching and beefing and all that, Mm. right? And a lot of people like to shrug it off and just go, oh, yeah, it's just a fucking graph. It's like, nah. Yeah. Serious business, yeah. right? Might sound silly, might sound childish, daft, whatever, but fuck them, they don't know what they're on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, you know, it means a lot to a lot of people because it gives a lot of people an identity and a meaning in life mm. and that. And it ain't fucking hurting anyone. Um, but I will say, for the Joe public, mm. and I, 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 exp- I had this kind of uh, theory r- running around in my head yesterday. I went out with the missus, you know. First time I'm not looking at no laptop and I'm <laughs> going to, or a phone. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, I think on surface the Joe Public <clears throat> they really don't have, and I'm not sure whether they actually entirely care either. But if they were to really understand the weight of what is going on in the walls, on the walls, mm. in the trains, on the trains, what these tags and what what they mean, the, yeah, and what yeah, it yeah. means, yeah, it, it, I think if they were to just get a little bit more. Um, assessment from anybody rather than a tourist showing them around Shoreditch yeah. like real accounts of what this stands for at this time right now well, like, their minds, I it? guess that's a bit like what this podcast is about really is kind of because I'm sure you get a lot of kind of non-graph people all the time yeah. who watch this yeah. and uh, oh I never realised you know these mm. these graffiti guys aren't just like little fucking hoodlums mm. and little fucking scumbags mm-hmm. just going out wrecking shit yeah. there's actually a, a you know a, a real kind of like important kind of culture going on that actually means something I mean it's yeah. 50 years old is it now you know and coming up yeah. and, 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 and people still tend to live by the same kind of ethics and the same kind of rules that were set down right at the mm. beginning you know mm. some people don't but a lot of people do 
You know, I, I personally do, mm -hmm. you know, and I still follow the code, even though it's meant to be a completely free to do what you want kind of, <laughs> well, you yeah. know. <laughs> it should always put a, put a double standards in yeah, yeah, anyway. well, of course, yeah. you know, it's, it's all ego driven, isn't it? So it's Do what uh, you want, but if I don't like it, then don't do what you want. <laughs> no, no, well, it, it ain't everyone's cup of tea, is it? You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's like style, isn't it? You know, it's like not everyone likes a certain style. You can't please everyone. All you can do is mm. please yourself. And yeah. at the end of the day, that's what you're doing. Yeah. And if you happen, other people people happen to kind of like vibe on it as well then you're doing a good thing you know mm -hmm. mm, yeah. and I think the other thing the other important thing especially for anyone that's going to get into graph because you're right a lot of people you know they they mm. come in from the the outro of these kind of conversations like a lot of people that are on the on the channel they they, mm. they don't always follow or profess to be a graph writer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good energies yeah. and that's all yeah. we promote on this podcast man nothing but yeah, good energies yeah, yeah. The mighty wise inside the place. Thanks so much Can for I joining us, Can I just say man. as well, big up Drax, big yes. up all We Rock Hard, PFB, WD, all the North London crews, mm -hmm. big up Doze, big up Jet, mm -hmm. Flash, Lask, mm -hmm. all the fucking boys out there that are mm -hmm. smashing it at the moment and I, I've oh, got love for everyone, really? you know. Um, thank you so much, my brother. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, yeah. Is that, we're done. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're sweet. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big up, big up, my man. Big up that. Yeah, you know what it is, all right? Sharing is caring. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? For the regular regulars, you know. We're here all the time. It's ain't for us, it's for you. It's for the culture. It's for the documentation. It's for the future. It's what we're here for doing, all right? Stay lucky. Remember, crime don't pay, neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. That's nice one, wise. Peace. Peace. Wow.